Now, you've also withdrawn two growth targets and cancelled your planned dividend. Um, that's quite a lot to digest in one earnings release, and it makes me wonder, do you think that things are going to get worse from here for the business? Yes, thank you. Good morning. Um, clearly, we are in a situation of uh, high uncertainty with COVID-19. We have lived the first phase and there is a question, is there a second wave or not? Therefore, you have to be very cautious. When we come to the uh, strategic plan, uh, it is clear that uh, given the situation with COVID uh, and the impact on profitability and return on equity, we had to withdraw two of the four targets. However, our strategy remains clearly intact and clearly confirmed. And when it comes to the dividend, um, we've paid 50%. We have uh, kept a deposit of a second, uh, a reserve of a second half, but our regulator has clearly indicated that uh, uh, there is a very high recommendation not to pay any dividends up to the end of the year 2020. And we are obviously following this recommendation. Thomas, good morning, it's Manus. Look, with, with all of that in mind and so much uncertainty, you're reaffirming that you think it's going to be a one and a half billion euro hit from COVID for the full year. Can you really be confident that that doesn't slip? If you've had to abandon the growth targets, you've got litigation, you've got a lot of headwinds, Thomas. So is 1.5 being very conservative or room for risk of reappraisal? So 1.5 billion has been the first estimate, and uh, we have confirmed this, Manus, as you said. Um, the uh, reasons uh, for those 1.5 are uh, relatively clearly identifiable. So you have, uh, for example, event cancellations. Um, we know which events will happen, which will be canceled, so that's relatively easy to calculate. But then, as you say, You've got uh, mm -hmm. other events uh, like uh, business interruption where it's more difficult. Um, we have a long history of uh, being an insurer and uh, we're obviously taking today our best estimate um, of what will happen. And therefore, we are confirming the 1.5 billion. Obviously, going forward, there is the uncertainty of a potential second wave. Uh, but at this point, this is our best estimate and we feel very comfortable with that. Uh, Thomas, let me um, just follow up on that then, because you mentioned um, events, you mentioned business interruption. Can you just give us a sense um, in the business of where you might be seeing at the very least um, a little bit of stabilisation, if not a recovery? Is it more within events or more within business interruption or elsewhere? So, I mean, th th these are still things that uh, we need to process through because uh, there you see that claims have happened. So events have been cancelled. Uh, there are certain uh, interruptions. Um, and I don't see any recovery there because these are claims that uh, have definitely happened. Where I do see recovery and a change is very much in the strategic lines that we've been focusing on. So when you look, uh, for example, at health, the health business um, has grown significantly, demand has gone up, and when you think about recovery and where is future opportunity, this is clearly one area where there is future opportunity and where we are well positioned. Thomas, look, you've got to run the business for the future. I know you're dealing with a crisis of, of here and now, but part of your strategy is Asia and is China. Given the security law, in Hong Kong and the rising global tensions with China. Do you want to commit more capital to China? Is there a risk that the more that you commit, the more risk you take for regulation and trapped capital? So AXA is, is a global insurer. We are uh, uh, operating in over 60 countries. And uh, obviously, uh, global and geopolitical tensions uh, always create uncertainty which is not good for business. However, our business uh, is, is very local because um, we are focusing and serving local needs, for example, for retirement, for health, uh, for business interruption and so on. And with the exposition we have today, and we are the uh, largest foreign insurer in China, we feel very well positioned. It is a market with great opportunity and we are continuing our engagements as we have uh, laid it out in our strategic plan. 
Um, Thomas, during COVID, um, a number of insurers were criticised for not covering enough operating losses, for example, with restaurants during lockdowns. Um, are you getting a different response now in terms of how you, you've dealt with that issue at AXA? Quite honestly, I had difficulties to understand where the criticism comes from. Because uh, if you have a look and take the French market, the French market, the French insurance market as a whole, has committed 3.2 billion uh, to its customers and the society at large, uh, and also obviously the restaurant owners. And um, yes, one can say we have maybe not been fast enough at the beginning, but when you look at our response and when you compare this to other sectors, we are the biggest, uh, the biggest contributor to the social effort. And honestly, I think uh, this should be more recognized. What are you most worried about in, in global markets, um, Thomas? We're, we're dealing with negative rail rates in the States. We're dealing with bond yields crumbling around the world. Just from a market perspective, um, what are you most concerned about? I'm, I'm very concerned, obviously, about uh, further waves of COVID and what does it mean uh, for economies since um, most of the uh, states will not have um, additional uh, amounts of money to spend to help. And secondly, obviously linked to that, the question of uh, how volatile will uh, financial markets be because volatility uh, is always bad for our business. Uh, the long and enduring effect uh, of this crisis uh, on a negative side will be low interest rates, which is obviously never a good message um, for customers that are saving uh, for their retirement. And that's why, what I said earlier, our strategy of shifting away from financial risks, going more to commercial insurance, going more to health and protection, is exactly the right one. And this COVID crisis has confirmed and reaffirmed the strategic direction.